Hello, my name is Susan Carroll. I am Assistant um, Professor of Mathematics at Georgia Highlands College, and we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Now, to solve quadratic equations, we are talking about the generic quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now, if you take this generic equation and complete the square on it, you end up with the quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And the terms under the radical, b squared minus 4ac, this is called the discriminant. The discriminant lets you know how many solutions you have and of what type of numbers they are. So, for example, if your discriminant is a perfect square root, um, say, for example, square root of 49, which is going to come up again, okay, then that is 7, or plus or minus 7 technically, and you're going to have two rational solutions. Now, if you have something, say, like the square root of 10, which is not a perfect square root, then you're going to have two irrational solutions. Now, if your discriminant ends up to be 0, so you'll end up with the square root of 0, which of course is just plain 0, then you're going to have one rational solution, something that can be written as a fraction. And if you end up with a negative under the radical, like negative 7, well, that can be simplified a little bit as i square root of 7. And of course, it's going to be really plus and minus i square root of 7, so you're going to have complex conjugate answers. Now, let's get to using this quadratic formula. So we're going to start off with something that actually could be factored, so we'll get comfortable with it. So we're going to have x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. Okay, now don't forget, we need to find out our a, which is your coefficient of x squared, which is 1, your b, which is coefficient of x, which is 1, and your c is your constant. And you are going to pick up the signs in front of these numbers. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a is going to give you negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 12 all over 2 times 1. And now that's your plug-in step, which you really shouldn't do any arithmetic on. And now we can clean the um, discriminant up. So 1 squared is 1. We had two negatives to make a positive. 4 times 1 times 12 is 48. And of course, under the radical, I mean, under the fraction bar is just a 2. So finally, we get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 2. And 49 is a perfect square root, so you get 7 over 2. And once the radical goes away, you pretty much have to, at this point, break this up into two problems. Negative 1 minus 7 over 2, which is negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. And don't forget to go back and do the other one, negative 1 plus 7 over 2, which is... 2, I have, was thinking about what the answer was, With, and this is 6 over 2, which is 3. Okay, now, let's look at an example that has a coefficient of x squared that is not an, just 1. Let's do 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. Now, this one has a couple of interesting things going on. Our a is 3, our coefficient of x is negative 5, and our constant is negative 2. So once again, 
plugging it into our quadratic formula. If you write this down every time you use it, you will eventually have it memorized. You will get negative negative 5 plus or minus square root. Now that negative is also being squared, so put the negative 5 inside the parentheses and the square on the outside. Minus 4 times 3 times negative 2, and this whole thing is being held up by the 2 times 3. So this is going to give us positive 5, because 2 negatives make a positive, and then we're going to get 25, and that's going to be plus 24, all over 6, and we get 49 again underneath that radical. Purely coincidence, by the way. All right, and of course we know that the square root of 49 is 7. By now we know that. And we need to break this up. So x equals 5 minus 7 over 6, which is negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 third. And x equals 5 plus 7 over 6, which is 12 over 6, which equals 2. Now, let's look at one more problem, and this one's going to have an issue that we need to talk about, a couple of issues that we need to talk about. Let's first start off with negative 3x squared minus 4x equals 12. Well, this is not in the form that we need it in. We need it set equal to 0. So first thing we're going to do is subtract 12 from both sides and we get that equal 0. Now, my leading coefficient is a negative. Um, I don't like that. I don't like using a negative for my leading coefficient in the quadratic formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each and every one of these terms by negative 1, and it does have to be each and every one of those terms to keep everything all balanced, and we get 3x squared plus 4x plus 12 equals 0. You do not have to do that step, but I find it safe for people to get rid of that leading coefficient of a negative 3 instead of a positive 3. Now, this is really nice because it makes all our numbers positive. a is 3, b is 4, and c is 12. And at this point, we're ready to go to the quadratic formula. And once again, for the last time, writing this thing down. And then we get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times 12 all over 2 times 3. And that's going to be negative 4 plus or minus 16 minus 144 over 6. And that's going to give me negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 128 over 6. Now I'm going to take that down to the next page just so we will have enough room here. So what we have is x equals um, negative 4 plus and minus the square root of negative 128 over 6. Okay, now negative 128 is negative 1 times 64 times 2 all over, ah, my pen's messing up on me again, that's a 6. Okay. So negative 4 plus or minus 8i square root of 2 over 6. And you will be required to factor out that 2 that they have in common up in the numerator because it will cancel with the denominator. So 2 goes into 6 3 times. So we're going to get negative 2 plus or minus 4i square root of 2 over 3. And if you have to break that up into separate terms, negative 2 thirds plus or minus 4 
thirds i square root of two.